Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Turmel, the MedPod Engineer, and yesterday the Crown lost their case at the Supreme Court of Canada in an application for leave to appeal the Svetkopoulos decision out of the Federal Court of Appeal. What happened was in 2001, Terry Parker got the law declared dead. In 2003, Alan Young got it declared back to life. But then two months later, Health Canada reinstalled one of the bad conditions that had made it dead originally. And we just found out last year that the bad condition had made it dead for the last five years. And the Crown appealed to the Supreme Court of Canada and lost yesterday which means that the medical marijuana medical access regulations exemption has not been working or nor valid for the past five years and they haven't fixed it yet and when there's no exemption it means there's no prohibition for the past five years minimum here's a story Ken West Janice Tibbetts misrepresents Fet Capullo's court victory posted April 24th 2009 today so the Crown lost their application for leave to appeal the Federal Court of Appeals declaration in the Svetkopoulos case that the MMAR was not constitutionally sound since December 3rd, 2003. So the exemption application system was not valid since the last five years. Of course, the government has not corrected the unconstitutional violation yet until they heard from the Supreme Court yesterday. So now they're going to have to fix it to bring the prohibition back alive, according to Alan Young's Hitzig Statute Resurrection Theory. So at health groups, Yahoo group dot, uh, Medpot discuss message 12,636, is the Crown's description in the Terry Parker case of what the Svetkopoulos case was about. Before we go read the Can West misrepresentation. Point 57. On January 10, 2008, approximately one month after Justice Clements released the decision in this matter, Deputy Justice Strayer of the Federal Court released the decision declaring paragraph 41B1 of the MMAR constitutionally invalid as inconsistent with Section 7 of the Charter. So, the MMAR were not constitutionally sound since Health Canada reissued the bad conditions on December the 3rd, 2003. Of course, the Crown tried to argue that. Point 58. However, the decision of Judge Deputy Judge Strayer did not invalidate the entire MMAR, only Section 41B1. Therefore, the possession prohibition remains valid despite the decision of Svetkopoulos and the appellant cannot rely on that decision in support of his argument that he now has a right to possess marijuana. Now, the point is, however, the Hidsig court also did not invalidate the entire NMAR, but only section 41B1 again and three other sections. And there... The possession prohibition did not remain valid. So, if four flaws made the whole NMAR invalid, one flaw makes the whole NMAR invalid here too. Point 59. Furthermore, the issue before Ju Deputy Judge Strayer was whether persons authorized to possess marijuana have reasonable access to illicit supply of marijuana. And I point out it doesn't matter what the flaw or flaws were. Once the exemption was flawed constitutionally, the prohibition was invalid. And they continue, Parker has reasonable access to an exemption. The provisions of the MMAR, which are germane to this appeal, namely those provisions governing how an individual obtains authorization to possess marijuana, were not at issue in Svetkopoulos. And I point out they weren't at issue in Hitzig either. Other flaws were found in the MMAR, and it isn't at issue here with Parker. But another flaw has been found in the MMAR by the court. As such, the decision should have no impact on the case at bar. And I say, well, as such, the decision should have a great impact on the case at bar. If the possession prohibition is invalid because the MMAR was constitutionally flawed again, we win. Quite an impact. So point 60, in any event, the Federal Court of Appeal has stayed the decision of Justice Judge Strayer pending the resolution of an appeal initiated by the Attorney General of Canada to the Supreme Court of Canada. Therefore, the decision of Deputy Justice Strayer is of no force and effect for the purposes of this proceeding. 
and I point out, well, it's official as of April the 23rd, 2009, yesterday, that the stay and application for leave to appeal have both been dismissed, the crowns, and the decision of Deputy Judge Strayer is now of force and effect for the purposes of this proceeding. And it was dismissed by the Supreme Court of Canada with costs, a true waste of time argument. So I'm having a buddy go get the background documents from the Supreme Court in Ottawa. Remember the Frankel statement from the Krieger Memorandum that the cultivation and by implication possession had been declared of no force and effect in Alberta? How that came in handy? Well, we'll hear what the Crown told the Supreme Court about what the case really meant. And you can bet it wasn't what Janice Tibbetts is telling us on Can West News. Top court ends government pot monopoly. By Janice Tibbetts. Blah, blah, blah. Ottawa, Canadians who are legally permitted to smoke pot to treat illness won a victory in the Supreme Court of Canada on Thursday when it refused to hear an appeal of a ruling that put the end to the federal government monopoly. So I say a declaration that the MMAR didn't work and the prohibition has been dead for five years is warped into an end to monopoly? A three-judge panel, without giving reasons, rejected the Justice Department's application to challenge a federal court of appeal decision that gave licensed producers the right to grow marijuana for more than one patient. Well, it didn't give them the right. It declared that preventing them was a violation of their rights, which should stop as of today. The MMAR hasn't been fixed yet, though. Giving licensed producers the right to grow is far less important than giving the MMAR a constitutional thumbs down. The Supreme Court decision to stay out of the matter effectively upholds the 2008 ruling, which dismissed the government's argument that the industry would be thrust into deregulation if the court loosened federal regulations. Now, she tells us of the wrong argument of the Crown that got dismissed, not the right argument that won. Um, the decision was a victory for a group of patients who challenged the federal regulations, arguing that the government issued pot supplied by prairie plant systems in Manitoba is too weak and that they should have had the option to find their own supply. The appeal court decision struck down the government regulations that authorize users who cannot grow their own marijuana designate a grower or obtain government issued weed. And I said, well, I guess the strike down took effect yesterday. And according to the professor saboteur, Alan Young, now the MMAR flaw has been removed after five years. So I guess Alan Young must say the law is back alive again. Well, actually, it depends if they're going to change the printing, doesn't it? So on until Termel's Parker case got the prohibition turned off on August 1st, 2001, Terry Parker Day. Off until Young's Hitzig case turned it on October 7, 2003, two years later. And then the prohibition was on until Health Canada installed the flaw on December 3rd, two months after Hitzig. And it stayed off until Health Canada fixes the flaw. And it hasn't announced any repair since the law yet. So, the patients sought the right to buy marijuana from Carousel Harvest Supply, which under the current regime was not allowed to supply more than one patient with medical marijuana. There are about 2,000 people legally allowed to use marijuana for medical purposes, but the lower court found only 20% buy it from the government supplier. Justice Department lawyer Sean Goodett argued in the appeal court that statistics weren't enough to conclude the government supplied marijuana was inadequate or forced people to seek drugs in the black market. Moreover, sanctioning growers to supply more than one patient would allow the industry to develop without safeguards and exacerbate the risk that Marijuana will be diverted to improper use, he said. And those are his rejected reasons for reinstalling his flaw. So, of course, no one expects the Can West prostitutes to tell the whole story, the important story. This isn't the first time Can West distracted from the true victory to focus on the minutiae. They ignored Terry Parker, who eventually got the law declared dead on Terry Parker Day, August 1st, 2001, to concentrate on Alan Young's case that got the law declared resurrected on Hitzig Day, 2003. This is an incredible victory for us that only the crown and the narc moles won't be able to highlight. Only we can use it because only we keep going after the repeal of the prohibition. Svetkopoulos is in Terry Parker's case under advisement before Justice Talk right now, and I'll have to fax this to him too on Monday. It's in Real Martin's cultivation appeal at the Ontario Court of Appeal, and it's going to be in every one of our applications to prohibit or quash charges from now on.
By the way, I was speaking to a guy doing a Krieger prohibition who mentioned that the Crown was getting frustrated since they've been at it for three years and with no trial started. I pointed out it gave him more time to keep looking for a specialist so his doctor will sign his exemption application. And once he gets it, he's off the hook like Derek Francisco. So spending another year going all the way to the Supreme Court gives him another year to find a doctor and win an exemption the other way. I suggested he have his doctor ask Health Canada for a list of Ontario doctors who have signed for exemptions so his doctor doesn't have to search for the one in 60 needle in a haystack. If no list, a judicial review. Wouldn't a list available to doctors be useful? Applicants too? What a rush when you know the real truth.